Hey, what is up? AJ of Fire from Heaven here. Welcome to another video. And uh, this is going to be sort of a tutorial video series that I'm starting. Hang on a second. Okay, I don't feel like that's not quite in the right spot. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm thinking I might just do how to videos once in a while maybe I'll try to do them once a week or something um, my expertise is guitar uh, so that's pretty much probably what it will mostly consist of maybe some vocal stuff some screaming stuff uh, if my freaking allergies ever chill out because um, I can barely breathe <laughs> through my freaking nose right now uh, but anyways um, Starting a how-to video series, um, and going to in this video show you how I get a sick metal guitar tone. And basically, I'm going to create a metal guitar tone from scratch. And you are here with me, looking at my screen. So uh, we're gonna get right into it. Um, first thing about metal guitar tone is you know you obviously want something that sounds great and everything for what i do i do um you know consider what the guitars will uh you know somewhat what my mixes are normally like which every i'm gonna take my headphones off every uh song you know is different in some some ways gosh and mixes are slightly different i you know i i never mix uh, a song the exact same way there are some principles to mixing that I will share that I've learned that that I use in every mix uh, but there, there's you know obviously every song is different and you know uh, there's just different sounds different tones you can go with and uh, um, typically when I create a metal guitar tone you know there's certain things I'm looking for but I don't ever reamp uh, my tone to fit with the mix of the song better or whatever, you know, uh, you know, some bands like to do that. I don't care for it just cause it's another step that I don't need to do really. Cause I have, you know, good, good. If I have good sounding guitars, you know, that I don't need to, you might reamp them t for certain purposes for it to like, f you know, just everything to mix better. But I just like having raw metal, you know what I mean? Not, crappy sounding metal okay there's a difference gosh i can't freaking breathe uh but i like it to sound somewhat raw you know and i don't like everything to be perfectly tweaked and produced and mixed you know i i'm not saying i don't do my best job you know i'm not saying i don't work hard at it i'm not saying i just throw something together um I want a great sounding song, but I also want raw metal. You know what I mean? Um, too many bands today, the guitars just sound artificial. <clears throat> and I can't stand that. So, uh, I forget you could actually see my screen because I used to live stream a lot. Um, sort of explaining how I do stuff, but I didn't have this set up to where people could see my screen. So I could actually explain what I'm doing and you could see what I'm doing. <coughs> Frick, my nose, man. Okay. First I'm doing input one. This is going to be different if you're using different DAWs or whatever. If you're trying to do like what I'm doing, um, just understand kind of like the, the general idea of it. You know, some DAWs you don't have to do an input. You know, it, you know, sometimes it's already, you know, it just automatically does this. And that whole thing was just, it's more for what I do with live streaming. But I have it on my computer um, to help with latency and sound like that whenever I'm live streaming and doing stuff like this. Uh, because this whole setup is completely live setup right now. So whenever I plug in my guitars, you'll be able to hear it. You know, you're hearing straight up what I'm recording. I'm not doing it like most guitarists where 
they record the audio and video separately and they have to sync them like that's a pain in the butt and that's how i used to do a lot of youtube stuff uh guitar covers and stuff is a pain in the freaking butt and i'm a dad you know full-time dad full-time husband i work full-time day job you know all, all week long i got crap to do and i got music to make and if i'm going to be creating content um you know learn different ways to do things that are more efficient you know, artists are always whining, complaining. Oh, we can't keep up. We have to create so much content to keep up. Stop being a little baby and freaking be creative because, you know, that's your expertise, your musician. So being a baby, freaking be creative and think of ways to be more efficient with your time. You know, I don't have to sync the audio. I can do whatever the heck I want. <laughs> That's completely live. It's all going into one thing. I don't have to edit and stuff like that. So think about that kind of stuff. You know? Um, I can totally talk about that in what I'm planning on doing soon called the Unconventional Artist Attitude. And I can, I'm can i going to get fired up on that, guys. Uh, I'm going to get fired up on that. But anyways, this is supposed to be a tutorial video. This is really dragging. Let's get into it. <sighs> okay, so I have a lot of things. I have Tone Forge and stuff like that. You know, these are kind of fun to mess around with. I've never actually created a tone I liked enough to put in a song. You know, I, I just never got a sound that I super liked with it. Uh, actually, you know, I actually have put a, for lead tones, I've actually gotten some decent ones, but I just can't, you know, and I, I stopped messing with them because I got this Helix Native plugin. Just has a lot more options and things to do. Um, I love Joey Sturgis tones. You know, they have a lot of great plugins and stuff. And Tone Forge, I love their Bass Forge Hellraiser. I use that in for all of my bass tones. Um, and I, I love a lot, of, you know, their mixing plugins and stuff like that. With the with the guitar plugins, I've just um, I have a lot of them, but I don't I haven't been able to get the sound I quite want with them. But like I said, since I got this, I just uh, kind of stopped messing with them as much because I get a great sound with this. So I have a lot of these I kind of experimented with. Um, this was like one of the first ones I made with it. And that was kind of more of a sound I used on Evil Wolf Chronicles. And I think... Oh, shoot. Huh. Well, that sounds poopy. Yeah, something happened with this. Um... But I think that was the tone I used for Defiant for that whole album. This was my lead. is the tone I used on Hidden Reflections, yeah. Um, this is the tone I actually use normally with my 8 string. That's why it's called a AJ Super Chon 8 rather than Chonk, it's Chon 8. And this is, uh, one I'm using right now, um, AJ Super Chunk 3, 
Um, so, yeah, I just thought I'd show you those just for fun. We're going to start with a new preset. And we're going to call this... We're going to call this... Chonky... Donkers. <laughs> I just like messing around with these. Okay. So, first we're going to do... Input gate on. Um, so that's a, sort of like a noise gate. So whenever I add stuff, it's not going to be, uh, you know, it's a, you know, it's just a sound gate, noise gate. Um, so there's a lot of uh, options here. Kiki boost, <laughs> and obviously. You gotta understand when you're putting together a tone, you're not gonna get what you want right away, you know. Um, most people probably understand that, but I didn't when I was doing this stuff. Okay, what I used before was Scream 808. That's a popular plugin. I'm pretty sure you can download that for free if you look it up. I think. But I'm gonna use Horizon Drive. That is uh. Misha Mansour's pedal. Um, this is obviously like a digital version, but and you could use it on Tone Forge Misha Mansour. That's from J Joy Sturgis Tones. Uh, but yeah, so so they actually have this on a Helix Native. Um, so that's that's what I like to use. The way I like to start out with, and you know you could use authentic or extended gate range i usually use authentic because i want to sound real i don't want to sound artificial like a lot of you know especially gent stuff um sounds very artificial because it's so cut and choppy you know I, and some of that stuff it sounds kind of cool but it's just i used to like it a lot but it sounds too artificial to me anymore um I'm trying to think I, I haven't put together a tone like like Put together something for a while. Let's see. Okay. There are options. A lot of things you can do. Excuse me. I'm gonna do an amp next. I'm leaving a space here in case I want to add anything there. Sometimes people will add EQ or something like that. Or what? I, I don't know. Um, you know, they'll add whatever they want. Uh. But I kind of skip that and leave it open in case I ever want to add something. And let's see. I like using the line six, but donk. Um, excuse me for a second. Fucking nose. No, I don't edit my videos. Get over it. I don't care. Don't have time for that. I'm too busy making metal, being a dad, husband, and working full time. Anyways, presets, you know, usually decent here. I mean, obviously not with you know everything you need for a tone. Um, I don't usually mess with this till I get you know the rest of my pedal board, digital pedal board built. Next part, this is going to, if you're like, you don't know a lot about building tones and stuff like that, and you get you get to this point and you think it sounds crappy, and you get really frustrated, why does it sound so crappy? Okay, one thing you can do here is either um, add, Helix Native has cabs, so, you actually have amp and a cab combo here. So, they'll show you like what cabs go well with what amps. I'll just pick a random one in here. But see, basically, that helps, you know, that helps with the sound tons. And you can do double stack cab or whatever, or whatever the freaking correct terms are I don't know um, I've experimented with 
two cabs. I don't know if I really find anything I like, but typically I have maybe one or two tones that I've experimented with that I use like the cabs. And when you find the right, find the right cab with the right amp, it sounds great. Um, but what I like to do is impulse responses. And I have some freaking good ones. I just got, um, oh shoot, I forget his name. Joey Sturgis Tones has tons of impulse responses. I got some from, uh, gosh, I forget what they're called company's called but they have a lot of great stuff just look up metal impulse responses and you know you'll find a plethora of websites and stuff but anyways um yes i forget the dude's name i should remember his name but he he does a lot of uh he, he's really popular uh, metal mixing Metal producer. Uh, I can't remember his name. I can't freaking remember his name. But, you know, uh, a few months ago I saw an ad that he had for his own impulse responses. He, he, <coughs> he like, mixed, uh, he mixes a Mon and Martha and stuff like that. Like, he's done some really popular death metal bands and stuff. So, he has his impulse response collection that's, like, you know... A lot of like what's cool about impulse responses is like they're kind of they they give like a already set like EQ and stuff like that to make your guitars just sound great. Not all impulse responses do that. These ones like are great. Impulse responses are still great, and you but you obviously still EQ and stuff. But these ones are designed for metal mixes, so they got tons and. You can you can use one or you can double stack them. See that sounds freaking metal as frick. So you know, like I mess around with these. Um, so you know, he's got some different ones. See how it sounds a little bit different. basically go over here if you want a double stuck and add another one and you go with scoop -a doop and move this over here this over here I don't know why I do this uh, I don't know what moving those does all I know is when I was first watching tutorials on helix native that's what the guy would do okay I don't know why maybe you know why I don't so that's just what I do when I stack IRs or cabs so okay we can mess around with these this actually you know the one that automatically filled in here is uh didn't even uh was it even the part of the collection of uh, impulse responses I was talking about but we can experiment with some of those I'm going down to those because I like those
And I can just click this arrow here to switch to the next one if I want. Oops, wrong way. In case you're wondering, you don't have a uh, plugin like this where it has basically everything you need in it and you just build a pedal board like that. You can look up free plugins, you know. Like I said, I think you can find Scream 808. That's a great one for free. Um, so basically the idea here, the principle is you need for metal, um, this is what I do. Distortion plugin, amp, IR, EQ, if you want. And I add, uh, I'll keep going here and I'll show you what I do. Um, and then we'll start tweaking things. Uh, so you can add an EQ box here or something, and EQ it how you like it. These IRs I just got recently, they make it sound sick, and I don't even feel need to EQ. You can if you need to, if you want to, if you don't have IRs or whatever. But um, basically, you need uh, impulse response loader. If you don't have something like this that already just automatically loads IRs for you, look up impulse response loader. I'm pretty sure there are some free ones you can get. So if you're new to this kind of thing, it, it does take a little bit of time. And it's a, like, you know, if you're not very tech savvy, like I wasn't when I was first learning this stuff, um, you just, you know, the internet is a great resource. You can figure out anything you need to on there. You know, if you want to figure out a problem, you're going to find a way to figure it out. It's not that, you know, it's just a little bit of a learning process, but look it up, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? How, um, you're going to have to learn how to install plugins and stuff like that to your DAW. It's not that complicated once you figure it out, but it's going to seem like a lot when you're first trying to figure that stuff out. But it's really not that big of a deal. It's a pretty simple process. This kind of plugin makes it so much easier. So I would recommend just investing in something like this. You know, it's worth it because it saves you a lot of time and energy and frustration. Um, you know, I don't have to have, I don't have to go to different websites, buy or download, because there's a lot of free websites that have free plugins you could just download and use for free. They, they work, you know. Um, not about your resources, about your resourcefulness. If you find a way to make things like that work for you, you know, just beginning, you know, you're going to be really resourceful, whatever. And it's just going to be even more to your benefit when you know how to use that kind of thing. And you can actually start investing in really good resources and stuff. Um, but back to this, because I keep getting on tangents. Main, I, main thing, basically, distortion, amp, impulse response loader. Some EQ if you want it, if you feel the need. And uh, so that I would put that some, somewhere here. And then I also add uh, a sort of room reverb. And I don't have it very loud in the mix. But it just makes it a little, just slightly more realistic. It probably doesn't really do that much, but I do it just because um, so yeah. You know, that's a, that's not something you need. You know, you could make a really great metal tone, like I said, with the first three things. Distortion, amp, IR. You know, and EQ. I would say EQ just because not all IRs are going to be, you know, like the ones I have. You know, you could go and get these. I should just look it up what they're called. Uh, here, I'll look it up real quick just so you know. And I'm trying to find my file because I thought maybe it would have that.
Yeah, I can't find it, but look up metal impulse responses. I guarantee you'll you'll see the guy I'm talking about right away. It, his name eludes me. I don't know why. Uh, and there's tons of other ones out there. But, you know, you can always do the EQ just to shape the tone a little more to whatever your liking is. I'm not going to because I, I like that. You know, and um, with this, you know, if I really felt the need, I could do a low cut or a high cut. You know, that's a little bit of EQ, but this sounds sick. You can always go back and tweak settings and the amp and stuff, and that you know that helps to. Um, I do tend to cut the mid slightly, uh, bass, um, depending on what I'm doing, you know. There is essentially the fundamentals of a good metal tone. You know, a distortion pedal, amp, IR. You know, I should add a lot of these things have things that maybe not all pedals will have. Like this, my distortion pedal, my Horizon Drive, it has a noise gate. And I have a pre-installed noise gate at the beginning of this input. And I have that on, you know, I could change the settings on that if I want less, uh, less sound or I want a little bit more of a raw sound, you know, less of the noise gate. Um, but I have that and then I have this noise gate too and I can do that to extend it if I want a little bit more, you know, that clamping down on my noise. <laughs> That kind of cleans it up a little bit. For jaunting. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, that's basically how I start. You know, if there are certain things that I think need tweaked or you cute, I'll do that. If I want a certain effect or a delay, I'll do that. Um, you know, usually what I do with a lead tone is I'll, you know, boost some of the mids. I can just do that with the amp, uh, and add a slight, uh, delay or reverb, you know, and maybe some, uh, you know, I think, um, uh, I can't think of the word. Some chorus effects sometimes sound cool on lead tones. Some metal bands do it. I don't know. Do. I don't know. You know, I'm not. I don't use that um, on my lead tones, but you can. Uh, typically, on my lead tones, the only difference is a bit of bit of reverb and uh, slightly, you know some different settings but that's basically it oh yeah I changed this because I forgot to so that that's how I make a metal tone and you know I'm gonna end the video here and I hope you enjoyed it if you have any uh, questions about guitar you know that's kind of my forte my expertise 
Um, so I'll definitely be doing more tutorials. But if you have any questions, anything guitar related, I'd be glad to answer it in a video or, you know, message you or something. Um, let me know. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Stay metal.